Welcome to UK Business Show, UK's premier business show where we feature business thought leaders, high achievers, and industry experts. Today's episode is brought to you by World Outsourcing Solutions Limited, a company that specializes in helping executive business owners with virtual assistant services and business growth systems. Here's your host, UK Kachidori. Hello, and welcome to another very special episode. And today with me is the inspired coach, Tony. Now, let me ask you a question. If you're a business leader, have you ever discovered how important it is to build strong teams? In fact, you probably know this categorically that you cannot do anything alone. There's a proverb that if you want to go faster, go solo. But if you want to go further, take others with you. And I know you as a business owner, you want to go further. And that's why we're building, uh, we're bringing today an expert in building teams, you know, identifying who can you take with you so that you can be in the game for a long period of time. And in order for us to discover that, I've brought an expert in this area, uh, Tony, to help us uh, learn what it takes to build a team and also share with you some of the mistakes that you can avoid in building a team so that you can get to your goals. Tony, thank you so much for agreeing to do this with us today. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I appreciate you coming, uh, having me on the show and looking forward to uh, sharing some, some thoughts here. Yes, uh, I love it when we get to interview other podcasters because you have an amazing podcast, which I got to listen to it. Uh, you have amazing guests as well, which makes you uh, a guest you know, a professional, you know, <laughs> you've got a lot more to offer. Uh, and uh, thank you again for being here today. Yeah. Uh, Tony, for those who are yet to uh, come across your work, uh, you know, do tell us uh, who you are and what you've been up to and uh, everything else you want my audience to know. Sure. So first of all, my name is Tony Martinetti, and I'm the, um, the Chief Inspiration Officer at Inspired Purpose Coaching. And um, what I do is I guide leaders to climb the right mountain. Um, and what that means is really I help them to connect with you know, finding fulfillment in their journey and really connecting with that inspired purpose that really makes them come alive. Yes. A lot of people I've seen in my journey, um, they are navigating through their, their path and not really connecting with what they really, really want. And I help them to, to see that. So that's what I do, and um, I'm just honored and gifted to um, to have that as being my job. Yes, and uh, one of the things I like about you is uh, you've been doing it for a while, uh, mm -hmm. and you've helped a countless number of leaders. Uh, before you embarked on this journey, what were you doing? Yeah, I spent about 25 years in the, um, the finance and strategy side of the biotech industry, and a bit of the high tech industry as well. But I really loved about that is that it's just a, it's just an amazing industry to be part of, you know, helping to save lives and creating a lot of impact. Um, it, while I was there, I also started my own business. I had a consulting business. I've done some, um, some startups, um, was part of getting some companies off the ground. Really been a powerful journey. But along that path, uh, I also discovered what I really, really wanted to do with my life. And that's what brought me to coaching and really helping to build amazing teams in the world. Yes, yes. And you've worked uh, alongside some high-performing leaders in multiple yeah. organizations. Uh, would you share perhaps uh, some of your uh, discoveries in, in your journey to this? Um, so, I'm sorry, um, what company? Um, you've one more worked time? some high-performing leaders. Uh, yes. Yes. I've worked with companies um, that are, you know, really the le leading biotech companies like Genzyme, Vertex, Sarepta, and some of the organizations I worked with, they were just, you know, at the forefront of um, really pushing rare diseases um, as a way to make impact, to help save lives that were in the past really being ignored. Um, so I was really honored to be able to be part of that journey and to really see the impact we were making. Yeah. Um, I've worked with other organizations as well along my journey, but those are the ones that um, I, I often think about and I can say I'm very proud to be able to say I was part of that um, yes. journey. 
Yeah. One of the things I like about working for a big organization is you get exposed to cutting edge technology and, you know, what is working right now in your field so that uh, when you then branch out, you're well prepared uh, because you, you are always around high performing individuals. You feel the competition is very high. Expectation is very high. So your standard also gets higher. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, you hit the nail on the head right there when it says, you say that it's, it's not just about the, um, the technology in its own right is really powerful. I mean, I worked on with some, you know, early gene therapy, you know, some early science that is now like in the mainstream, but I also worked with some teams that were tasked with bringing some of these things forward and we had to be effective. We had to be high performing. And because of that, I learned a lot about um, leading them, being on them, navigating difficult times, and really um, what it takes to really be effective. Yes, yes. That's one of the things I love that because it separates you. Because, uh, you know, it's one thing to teach from the book. It's another thing to teach from experience. And uh, what you do is really from experience. So you share what's working now. Because most of these things, you know this, uh, is counterintuitive, you know. <laughs> uh, it's only after you've gone through that, said, oh, oh, hang on a minute. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's talk about uh, building uh, teams, Tony. Uh, you yeah. know, what comes to mind uh, if, when we talk about building successful teams to you? Yeah, I'm, I love that question because there's a few things that come to mind almost immediately. Number one, and this is, shouldn't be too much of a surprise, is that there has to be a foundation of trust built when you are bringing a team together. Um, if there are people on the team who don't trust each other, um, it's hard for anything to really get done of substance. Um, trust is the foundation. Um, I will say the next thing is you don't want to have a bunch of the same people on the team. You want to have a good, diverse group of people. And I don't mean just diverse in you know, uh, where they're coming from, what functions. You want diverse thinkers um, yeah. because yeah. that diverse thinking uh, creates um, better ways of you know, solving problems. Yeah. Um, I'll just say that you know, uh, some of that, um, the friction that's caused by people coming together and disagreeing is healthy. It is very healthy. It's not enjoyable when you're going through it, but uh, when you look at it later on, you'll see how well it was working for you and for the organization. I want to go back to something that you typed on very early on, that you have to have a foundation of trust. I was reading a book by uh, Steve Covey, Jr., and uh, yeah. a book called The Speed of Trust. You mentioned in there that really in this day and age, uh, trust is the new currents. And if you can do it, trust with your team leaders or your people you're getting to work with, uh, you can access anything. Just like if you've got money, you can access anything. What's your thought about that? I 100% agree with him. I really do. Because there's an element of like when the chips are down, when things uh, aren't going well, so, you know, we have no control over where, how things pan out um, with the external environment. But when the chips are down and you have people around you who trust you trust and they trust you, then you can persevere through anything. Mm -hmm. um, and you can um, turn, turn around and create something new out of a challenging situation. So I think that's where it really comes from, is this ability to say, it's okay, this happened. Now we can, um, we can move forward, but only because I trust that you're going to be there with me. We're going we're gonna to do this together. I love the quote you started with at the beginning which is the African proverb of, you know, to go faster, we go together. Um, you need to go, you know, go further, we go together. Correct. Of course, yes. I ruined the quote. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Um, you know, uh, how do you build trust? Because oftentimes, you know, mm. we don't talk about this. Maybe you can help my audience uh, perhaps figure out one or two fast ways they can build trust with their team leaders or people in their teams. Yeah. And so the first starting point is this is by, you know, communicating what it is that's expected of people and what they're going to be doing. Each person's roles have to be very clearly identified. But that doesn't mean that because that's your role, that's, you know, that you're painted into a box. Um, and that's the only thing you do. Be very clear and transparent about what each person's um, role is on the team. And then also set the container, create an agreement around 
what is on the table for the for the team to work on and how we'll work together. So that might mean, hey, when we have disagreement, we should voice it. Um, yeah. You know, no offline conversations. Let's have a let's talk about it together so we can make sure there's transparency amongst all of us. Yes, um, that, is like that. So, that is so true. You know, I remember when I got started way back in 2010, uh, building teams, as many of my listeners know now that I run an outsourcing company uh, where we provide virtual assistance to business owners around the world now. What a privilege I have to, you know, to be honest. But, uh, you know, that involves building, uh, you know, a community of uh, people that have to deliver, and I'm not there, they're working for my clients. So I had to figure out very, very quickly how to create loyalty in the people that I get to work with so that they will still work for me. At the same time, they're providing enormous value, and when problems arise, I get notified about them and we find a way forward. So it was a bit bumpy road. <laughs> but uh, what you just say there, that communicating as clear as you possibly can uh, was, yes. you know, was the linchpin really to, to, to making that happen. And mind you, I wasn't great at it because <laughs> I'm an entrepreneur. I'm, my mind is thinking, okay, can we do this, 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 this? But I had to figure out how to bring all that down so that we can communicate it uh, clearly and effectively. Yeah, I love that you said it because there's an element of, how the um, our our need to like move fast and be you know um, we tended to think that because there's so much to do we just keep on moving faster and we'll get it all done. But when we start to get slow and we slow down, it's actually how we get to move the business faster. Um, <laughs> and it's like paradoxically so, um, because then we're more intentional. Our communications become more intentional. Yes. Our um, our impact is more intentional. Uh, and by doing so, instead of doing more, we're actually doing less. But the less that we're doing is actually having a bigger impact. Yeah, outstanding. We covered about uh, you know building trust and having uh, diverse people on your team. Uh, let's explore some other strategies here that can help people build effective teams. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one of the things that um, is really important for building teams um, beyond those two, uh, those components is that making sure that um, you know what metrics you're going to be measuring. Awesome. Um, the metrics that you're going to be measuring are not always the ones that are typical. Sometimes you're thinking, well, you know, is it um, that, you know, what does success look like for the team is what we're really looking for. Does it look like... Um, you know, that the communications we're having are um, are more frequent? Are we having communications that are um, are successful? I mean, what are the metrics around, you know, how the team itself is getting along? Um, and are we all feeling like we're connecting on a frequent basis that allows us to say that we're, um, we're feeling as though progress is being made on our relationships and, and how the... Um, you know, we're reporting on the progress of, of the community of, you know, how we're coming together, not necessarily just on the metrics of, you know, hey, did we um, finish that project? Did we finish that aspect of the project? Uh, not just milestones. Yeah. I like that, uh, Tony, really, because, you know, if you don't have those metrics and a way uh, to feedback, you are sort of moving blindly and uh, you, you want to be able to reflect and uh, make sure that that happens. How do business owners, maybe, that you've come across uh, do this effectively? Maybe guide us uh, or give us some few examples how they do this. Yeah. So for business owners, because you, you think at first it's like, well, I mean, do I have to be you know hands on in the situation? And it really depends. If it's a small company and you know this team is critical for the success of the organization, I you know it's important for this um, these teams to come together, starting from the top and setting the tone and saying that this is an important um, group we're trying to get together. Let's make sure that they're seeing that importance. The message is starting from the top. So um, if you set the tone and create the container for that team to come together, create an agreement, and then if you need to step away and do other business, make sure you check in with the team on a, on a, um, 
ongoing basis, not because you're micromanaging, but more so than anything, to show them that you care, to keep them motivated, to keep them engaged, to, to understand you know, how you can help them to clear any obstacles that they're coming up against um, so that they're feeling as though they're being um, held as a team um, by the leader. Yeah. Um, sometimes these teams get put together and then they get thrown in the back corner <laughs> yeah. and they're not really felt supported. Um, so it's important to make sure teams are feeling supported yes. uh, by their leadership. Absolutely. You've just hit it on the nail there. Uh, here's how we do this uh, for you. If you're listening and you want to know my pattern on this, uh, currently we've got just over 80 uh, you know, uh, people on my team and we are looking to grow that. So on a regular basis, uh, we, in fact, every single Monday, we catch up with the team uh, just to find out what's working, what's not working, and that's on a business uh, level. Then, of course, there is uh, catch up with my team leaders, but that are in the key places, uh, you know, where I just catch up with them. How are they getting on outside work? How are they getting on with their project? How are they feeling things are going? Usually it's these little meetings that I have with them that truly foster the sense of we're in this together. Perhaps far more than the business meeting. At the business meeting, of course, we are more, we want to, to, to get that done, but it's those personal, authentic conversation outside that structured environment that uh, creates reality and the sense of I'm, I'm part of a bigger thing. I'm being cared for and um, yeah. you know, I'm valued incredibly well. And uh, so you can try that. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see what works. Let's hear your take on it, Tony. Yeah, I, I just want to add this, uh, a term that always comes to mind when I think about that. It's like it, it's compassionate accountability. Awesome. You know, it's your you know you're really creating a container to you're showing them that you're that you really care. You're compassionate about like being their leader, but you're also holding them accountable for results and making sure that things are on you know they're coming along because ultimately. You know, we've got a business we're running and we want to make sure this project is, this team is performing in the way that we need to. Yeah, so. yeah. And, you know, there are some leaders in the community that are finding it difficult right now to build teams. Uh, perhaps they have tried the strategy we are using, we are talking about right now, uh, and they just seem to be coming against a wall. In your uh, experience helping a lot of people like this, you know, what are some of the areas you would point them to so that they can start uh, working on to change things around. Yeah. And the biggest challenge right now is, you know, everyone is, is doing this via Zoom um, or, you know, virtual. And that can be challenging because there might be people in the room on these teams who are quiet and they're not necessarily, I call them quiet leaders because they're, they might be so brilliant and have so much to share, but because they get shut, they get uh, blocked out by the louder people in the room or the people just happen to be more vocal in general. Um, so the challenge is for the leader to make sure that every person has a chance to, to share if they want to share um, and to make sure everyone gets a chance. So ultimately there's two things that I always recommend is making sure that every meeting Every team, team meeting gives um, a check in and a check out. Um, so you do a pulse check on how people are really feeling about um, you know being there, being in the room, uh, and also making sure you at least hear their voice. So if someone's really struggling, they're not really you know feeling like they're part of this team. You can kind of get a sense of that. And um, as much as it can be challenging, the team leader should be having some check-ins from time to time with people outside of that meeting awesome. to say, how are you doing? What is it that, you know, about the project that excites you? What is it that's challenging for you? Are there things that I need to know that I'm not, that we're not hearing because we're not in person any longer. We're not having those bump in, into you know each other at the water cooler anymore. Yeah. Conversations. Yes. Yeah. This is so true. Uh, you know, when you mentioned that there are some brilliant people, but they're not as vocal, I thought of two people in my team. Like they're probably listening to this, so I'm not going to mention their names. Otherwise, uh, it's going to come back on me. But uh, you, you know, they're absolutely brilliant. So those strategies you have mentioned works. I use a tool called People Box. 
uh, which we schedule uh, those moments where I can have a conversation with people and you know with my team. We talk about every area so it covers you know the interaction, how they're getting on at work, with life balance, literally everything around that. So uh, you know if you want to check that little too. Uh, it's called the People Box. Uh, we put the link as well down, uh, in the show notes so that you can access it and see how well you can use that. It's very, very effective. It keeps me on top of, of my game, so to speak. <laughs> uh, t- Tony, you have helped uh, leaders navigate some difficult team moments, <laughs> which are bound to happen, uh, and you have had massive success. Uh, mm-hmm. What qualities, perhaps, uh, if you can point them out, that uh, leaders ought to develop in order to manage those difficult uh, moments in team building? Yeah. Um, I'll start with saying that, you know, not holding on to being right all the time. Um, You know, just being open and listening. Because listening... It's the hardest thing for people to really grasp. So leaders who can really listen to what's happening without judging and just, you know, taking it in and then trying to solve whatever issues are coming up by looking at them through the lens of we have this issue, not a people, you know, not um, you're not the problem. I'm not the problem. It's this problem that is a problem. (laughs) So we take this issue and we solve it. Um, as two people or you know multiple people attacking the issue, not the people. Um, so it's, it's really important because oftentimes we can be stuck in these rooms where it's a finger pointing exercise. Like this went wrong, it's your fault. Yeah. Um, and that's not helpful. No. Ultimately, the best way for you to solve it is to look at the problem and then attack it from the place of. What is another way we can look at this? How can we reframe this? What's another lens to look at this issue? And then as you pull it apart, it's more constructive when you take the personal aspects out of it. Yes, uh, this is genius. And I'm glad you, you touched on that uh, as well. I just want to add uh, one other way I've done this because <laughs> yeah. especially in the environment we find ourselves in, we don't know what people are experiencing outside the, your, uh, you know, the team building exercise or whatever project you're working on. So all those things affect them. Uh, so when you come to meetings, you come to building all things, there's a whole lot of things playing up and you need to be wise on that. So here's what I've done and what I continue yeah. to do is appoint people to the vision. What is it that we are all trying to achieve? And mm-hmm. oftentimes we are on point in achieving that or we agree on that. But the way we are going about it uh, may be different. So we may differ in the processes, but in the mm-hmm. goal. So by constantly bringing the vision, you know, making it so clear, for example, with our virtual assistant uh, program, we want to help our business owners have it easier than they are currently having because they are using our services. So that's the goal. How we go about it, how project managers do that, uh, maybe slightly different, but that doesn't mean they are wrong uh, as long yeah. as they uh, are on the same page in terms of where we are going. They are loyal, they're trustworthy. Uh, we can drive this thing forward. So that's another way to add on to that. Uh, for those, um, you know, uh, perhaps uh, who are already doing it or maybe wanting to do this, are there any mistakes that you, Tony, have noticed that leaders do? Uh, oftentimes they don't know they're making mistakes. <laughs> yeah, go but, but they are failing to to build the team together. Talk to us about that. Yeah. So um, if if they've made the team, you know, if they built the team and they feel like it's not going in the right direction, oftentimes I've heard people say, "Well, is it too late? You know, how do we turn a team around that's not going in the right direction?" Mm-hmm. And I guess. The, the answer to that question, um, if I'm understanding correctly, is really around, you know, uh, you got to pause. And before you take any more steps for, further, my lights just went out here. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's nighttime here. Um, the, uh, before you take any steps further, ultimately, um, what you need to do is, is to pause and reflect on what it is that we're trying to, um, to move forward from here. How can we uh, build that trust at this point? 
And if it is a situation where uh, people are starting to point fingers and create that animosity because we haven't made progress, maybe it's time to swap out some people in the organization to give it some fresh perspective, some new um, energy. Um, it's never too late to change a team around and, and make it a more high-performing team. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Uh, we are uh, coming towards the end of our time together here at the end. You are really, really helping uh, uh, my uh, my group here. I love my audience because, uh, you know, they, they are the the fire behind uh, what I do. So, and you're bringing truly a, a lot of value. And I hope you, as you're listening, you, you're also finding a lot of value in this because uh, team building is one of those exercises uh, that you will need to have uh, to do in order just for you to succeed. Uh, Tony, is there anything about team building that you strongly feel business owners need to know uh, that we haven't touched already? Yeah, I think I just want to take this concept a little further that we haven't necessarily gone deep enough into is the ability to create an environment for people to feel safe in mistakes. Um, And to know that not every project is going to be um, a a success, but making sure that they take away whatever they can learn from that, um, that experience, not just personally, but also as an organization. Because every project has, there's gold in every project because we're learning about how um, the science is moving forward or the technology, whatever it is that they're working on. Um, But also, what are we learning about how the team work together? So whatever um, whatever it is that the team has come together to do, what are you learning? What did we learn? How can we use it to move forward more powerfully? Wow. (laughs) <laughs> I, I like that, man. You, you are a master of this. Uh, you know, I do this as well. Here's a, my my strike of my meetings when I have with my team is we look at uh, what's working well, what's not working so well, and yeah. what are we learning from this exercise? Uh, what mm. can we do better? Uh, usually, those are the main things we talk about, and I put my team talking about that, and we're constantly moving forward making things work. And uh, you pointing it out just, uh, you know, sort of make me feel like we are on the right path with this. And uh, thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, for those who wants to uh, carry on uh, learning from you, Tony, where can they find you? Oh, thank you. Um, best place to find me is on my website, which is inspiredpurposeco.com. Um, or... You can find me on social media. Probably LinkedIn is the um, my number one spot to find me. Yes, yes, and also people can listen to your conversation with experts, with leaders as well. Yeah, uh, yep, that's on the uh, the virtual campfire, which you can find on any um, podcast uh, channel that you uh, listen to platform. And I also have a link to that on my website. Yes, uh, we will also put that link as well at the bottom of this uh, recording, so that. You have access to that. I enjoyed it when I was listening to it, uh, Tony. And I thought, you know, this knowledge also my you know, community will be who find it uh, very helpful. Uh, now, finally, Tony, you as a business owner, you know, we want to know what keeps you going uh, when you come across a roadblock or you know you come against yeah. a wall. How do you do it? Yeah, it's. I love that you asked this question because there's an element of this that is um, there's always roadblocks that come up. um, But you have to focus on what I say is the, you know, the gain instead of the gap, like to borrow from, you know, Dan Sullivan, um, his book called The Gap and the Gain. And this, if you're focused on how far you have, you you want to go and you how far you still have to go, it can be really challenging. But when you think about how far you've come, um, it's more empowering and it makes you think, wow, like I've doubled my income, you know, year on year. Well, I haven't replaced, you know, my, I'm saying this theoretically back when I first started to get going, I was always thinking, oh, I got to replace my corporate salary. I got to do this or I have to do that. And when I switched my thinking from this place of like, oh, I'm not where I want to be, but instead say, oh my God, I've impacted more than a hundred, you know, people this year. Then you start thinking to yourself like, wow. That's pretty powerful. And that's a that's a currency that I can believe in, and that I can really be proud of. Mm-hmm. Um, not where I want to go, and and writing about that. 
Amazing. Absolutely amazing. I love that. Uh, I love that. Uh, wow, gosh, you know, what, how can I add to that? I think it's incredible. Thank you, Tony. Uh, and uh, if you just joined us, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, maybe for the first time. I hope you found a lot of value from our conversation here uh, and uh, want to keep encouraging you to keep coming back. And also, if you enjoy it, please leave us a review on Apple iTunes. Uh, it will help us greatly. Uh, you know, to reach out to more people and impact other people. Tony, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you so much. It was really fun. It was amazing. Absolutely amazing. And finally, uh, if you haven't uh, joined us on Clubhouse, I'm running regular rooms there, uh, you know, helping people in business and also in podcasting. In fact, for my upcoming uh, podcast uh, training, which is how to start, scale, and monetize your podcast, uh, you know, you can access that. It's also, we're talking about it greatly uh, on Clubhouse, and I would love for you to check it out, uh, especially if you ever thought of starting your own podcast, because uh, there is so many values, so many benefits uh, of, uh, you know, having your own podcast. In fact, Tony can tell you that. Tony, what is number one benefit of having your podcast? Oh, having amazing guests uh, on the show that really, you know, I'm able to share with the world, which is just powerful. Uh, I think that's number one for me. Yes, yeah, totally. Not only does it bring you visibility, it brings you credibility and ultimately mm -hmm. profitability in your business. So if you want yep. to have all those three things coming in your way, you may want to consider starting your own podcast. And I'm covering all this information free, uh, which you like, perhaps, <laughs> on Clubhouse. So I want you to visit me. So if the regular uh, you know, rooms on there, so just find my name and just go right down on my profile. You'll see the rooms, the old Kai Business Show, and there's another one, British Podcast Fans. And there are times for you to join us there. With that said, have a great day. And remember uh, this saying that, uh, you know, it's better to be together than to do it alone. And we know that the environment is stronger than willpower. You want to put yourself constantly in the environment that will foster your growth, encourage you to keep forward. And I cannot think of a better environment than our own environment. Tony would agree with me right there. <laughs> I agree. 100%. So there you go. Love you guys. Uh, have a great one. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye for now. All right. Bye. Thank you for listening to Ukai Business Show. We will be back to bring you more episodes with success stories and advice straight from the experts. Want more? Check out www.ukaibusinessshow.com. Get your free trial of our virtual assistance service today. Just visit www.worldoutsourcingsolutions.com. Quote W O S 1 8 or send us an email at support at worldoutsourcingsolutions.com. Thank you.